Dan here, DD Speed Shop, 67 Camaro we're working on here. Um, we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sheet metal work to do, and it's going subpar. So when I got this car, it came with a bunch of stuff, uh, fenders, doors, some floor pans, and a lot of that we're using. It wasn't worth fixing the old stuff I have at all, and honestly, the fitment is not too bad. We've rebuilt the front end, you know, tubular control arms, disc brakes, all that sort of stuff. Um, the back half of the car, we were waiting on parts. And in the last video, I got a bunch of it. So I ordered two full GM style quarters. When I originally bought the car, it did come with skins, which were okay. But I thought, you know what? I'll spend a few more dollars. And in turn, this will allow me to save time uh, with bodywork. Obviously, it's going to join in the uh, door jam and the trunk area and the only real body work will be up in here and this still needs to be kind of cut to fit and, and whatnot but that's all kind of full of filler it's almost irrelevant the issue we ran into um, we also did mini tubs which we'll be doing again today the issue we ran into was the quarter panel here we have a large gap uh, a lot of people are telling me you know trunk lid all these other things um, I don't know where Oh, I, that's the original trunk lid behind the skin. And it fits the same. And if you look at this side on the factory quarter, it fits pretty good. Um, in the last video, I explained it by doing some measuring from kind of the, the body line to here to here. It's, uh, well, it's about that much shorter. <laughs> we're, we're probably, you know, half or so an inch shorter for some reason the way the stamping was done and it's a little goofy at the back here. This tail pan is junk. I've actually ordered another one to put in anyway. So there's gonna be a lot of new metal in this car and with that you have to accept that nothing's gonna fit perfectly because you know what? The panel might be right but the car was wrong and who knows what happened way back when. But ultimately all we're keeping on this car will be this tail pan, the roof skin and the cowl and then obviously firewall and stuff like that. But we did do some repair up there, I should say. We do have some frame rail uh, work to be done, but today we're gonna go ahead and tackle that quarter panel. Now, I am gonna leave this one as is. So a lot of people were saying in the comments, you know, get another panel, that's wrong. Some people are saying just fix it. Uh, some people recommend like an AMD panel, maybe it's a better quality. You know what, such is life. I'll, uh, we have to do a little bit more welding and then once we get to a point of kind of fitting everything, because we gotta fit the doors, the fenders, the hood, I'm gonna just split this right down on the edge. We'll put it over till we're happy with it, tack it in, and then we'll fill this strip in. Um, that blue piece of metal right there is the top of the quarter, so we'll reuse some of that. This side, I am going to do differently. Instead of trying to use the entire panel, I'm gonna try and save as much of the car as possible. Now, there's no doubt in my mind this car was hit in the back or something at some point because this whole tail pan's full of filler, both quarters are full of filler, a bunch of filler on the top, and it's you know caved in and, and stuff like that. So it's not rust, and it's not a repair panel, it's been kinked and straightened. It's fine, so we'll fix it. On this side, I'm gonna cut right on the line of the trunk lid where the angle would be. And I'm gonna keep that line as best I can. And we'll join it somewhere in here. You know what, we may, we'll probably use some filler and metal work, whatever we have to do in there, but so be it. That's what we gotta do uh, to make it fit properly. And we'll kind of tack it on the place. And then again, we're gonna end up using a new tail pan piece as well. So we can fit that in, have everything work. The deck lid, I'm actually pretty happy with. I think it fits pretty nice. So we're gonna do that. Cut our way across. We'll probably jog up into here, follow this body line, and then go here, somewhere like that, and then take that section out. There's no point going all the way up in here and into the, the window. That was a lot of work to get the panel to fit, and ultimately, really, I don't think it was worth it for my situation. We are gonna wrap all the way. Uh, we're gonna take all this out, and obviously we have to get the jam fix. Now that's the issue we have because we're gonna have to build a structure on the backside. 
So we'll do that today as well. It actually doesn't need that much now that I look at it. So it shouldn't be too bad and we'll get that taken care of. Now the nice thing is these uh, repop doors, they actually fit pretty nice. The gap is okay. I can't really complain. So I'm quite happy with that. So yeah, that's kind of a lot of babbling, but that's the plan. We've already done this once. Um, if you happen to miss the last video, it was a real nail biter. We have big wheel tubs in there. So we got mini tubs in. We'll do the same on that side. And up here, I can probably show you as well if I can fit my fat fingers in here. Can I not? Is it different? What's going on here? Oh, fail. Hang on. Sorry, it was fat fingering it. I got it in there. So you can see our, our jam is good. It's nothing's welded. But I did put the striker in and uh, you know, the door shuts pretty good. We have a pretty decent, you know, lip there. The gap leaves a little to be desired, but it's kind of the way it is. And also the door has to be adjusted out, but with no weather strip, you can't, it's gonna do a bunch of goofy things. There's no glass in it, there's no nothing. So we'll have to get it all taken care of. For now, let's start butchering. We got four fresh batteries. All this is gonna come out, trunk drops coming out and the wheel tubs, it's gonna be gutted right here in a hurry. We'll get that taken away. Then we can probably just go ahead and brace up the back structure for the striker and whatnot. It is rusted on the inside, but you know what? I'm gonna fix that from the inside versus the outside. And we'll uh, start hanging the panel, tubs. Go from there, I did make some mistakes in the last panel, so hopefully I can avoid some of those in this one. There's crap all over the camera, sorry about that guys. So we've obviously destroyed this in a hurry, but uh, you can kind of see now what we're dealing with. So the wheel tubs are out. Uh, we have just this little section here. So it's really not that bad, you know, three inches where we have to just go straight down. It doesn't have any curve to it or nothing. Um, but, you know, this does obviously, but this section right here, straight down, weld it just so it's to the rocker. And that's, uh, that's decent metal there. I don't think that's gonna be a huge problem for me. Um, the wheel arch, I gotta clean all this metal out, but that's not a big deal. And this is the real reason we're mini tubbing it, is because of this little bit of rust here. So what we're gonna do is we cut the floor out to the frame rail, so that's that far in. So we get rid of all that, we're nice clean metal, and then uh, that's all taken care of. The floor arch on this side is pretty good, the other side was rotten, so we'll be careful when we cut that out. For the passenger floor, sorry. Um, we cut the trunk drop out, I left just the one section because what happens is the trunk drop out actually attaches at the two halves of the wheel tub so it kind of lines it up. So that's kind of that. Now what happened though, we've hit a schnag. Um, this is the rest we'll fix from the inside once we get it all 
secured on the outside because this is all that's holding it where we want to be. But as I said, I believe it was hit in the back. And now if we get under here, the frame rails are like they're, you know, surface rusty, but they're not, not rusted through. But see this right here? That, well, it has a shadow, is a big kink. So that has been hit. And then it's had something, a plate welded over it, which you couldn't really see beforehand. So that is not factory. Now, I believe the local place did have some frame rails. See, the problem is the rest of the frame rails are actually quite nice. <clears throat> like that's factory undercoating and, you know, paint and stuff. It's really not in that bad shape. It's not all beat up. It's not too bent. It looks good to me. Now at the front, we may have some issues, but, uh, well, we're not focusing on that. We're focusing on the back. And I have learned at this point, as much factory metal as possible is the goal. That's, I, I was like that and I tried this other panel, it wasn't for me. So now, I'm gonna go run down, see if they have the, the panel. He did have one rail and he said he was gonna get the second. I don't know what one he had and I don't know when that was. But uh, buy the rail and join it uh, right here. Here back and we'll carry on. Now if you don't have the rail, it's, uh, we're taking a hard left turn I'm going to think about inside what direction I want to go. Because <laughs> if we do that, that means leaf springs are coming out. Uh, um, it, it's not going to be a roller anymore. And that is a bit of a hiccup that I don't really want to deal with. But if we can get this bolt out, and even if it's just loose in there after, we can put it back. We have a lot of work to do in the front um, and, and fit in the quarter panel and whatnot. But I do want this kind of right. I don't think it's got a kink in it, but I don't think that like shortened the car by a couple inches or nothing. It looks pretty straight. And like I said, it did have the other quarter panel on it that fit pretty good. So we'll have to do some fitting and whatnot. And the trunk floor wasn't buckled. So I bet it kind of hit, kind of folded it down. I'm sure they folded it back up. You know, obviously it tore, so they rewelded it and carried on. Now, we could, you know, heat that up, beat it into submission, all those things. But I think realistically for the cost of the frame rail, I think it was like $250 or something like that. It's probably just worth doing it. It's a nice enough car. And once it's in there, we'll metal finish it, we'll undercoat it. No one will ever see anything different. And it's really easy to join right here and get to both sides. Weld it solid, weld it all the way across, you know, plug it into the floor. And the trunk floor is actually in really nice shape. There's not a whole lot of issues there. So that's the current plan. I'm gonna run out and see if they have it before they close and uh, That'll determine the rest of the video. <laughs> Change of plans. So I went to the old uh, sheet metal store. They had one rail, so old Reg there at, at Walker hooked me up. So he had a right in and he had ordered a left, the left wasn't in yet. And I mean, I didn't, I didn't order them or anything like that. I did order a trunk pan, so that was there. So this is the classic support your local partsman because uh, you know, that the big deals online look great and all that, but here we are, you know, an hour later, I have what I need to carry on. So bear in mind. Um, and you get that, you know, constant attitude when you go visit the local guys. So this trunk pan here, it's actually quite a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. So that's something I don't think we'll use at all, but it goes up over here. Now the frame rails run right in this little section. This little jut out is where the leaf spring actually is. So it uh, looks like it'll kind of weld in there, same thing. And uh, what didn't come yet is underneath there's little brackets or uh, not brackets, what's the word for it? Saddles maybe, I don't know. For the fuel tank to fit in and then straps. So I got to deal with that. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do for a fuel tank in this thing. I guess I gotta order one or figure it out. At one point I thought I might go EFI. So we got to plan that. The tanks are all the same uh, size. It's just what I want to spend money on. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to pivot and probably work on the frame rail and the trunk floor kind of at the same time because the frame rail ends up bolting to the uh, trunk floor, right? Or not bolting, uh, welded. So we we'll probably figure that out and we'll section in the frame rail. We'll put in the floor pan, just kind of tack everything together. The car's not moving it. It's uh, it's still pretty sturdy, there's still a lot of strength. Even though it's all cut off, at the end of the day, the quarter panel is kind of meh for strength. Um, I might scab in a piece of metal just right quick there, but realistically, this thing's probably gonna have to get put on wheels, pushed outside, and I should do this all on the hoist. I think my life will be a thousand times easier uh, doing frame rail stuff uh, from underneath, and if I can uh, 
take the leaf out, let it all kind of hang and do that. So it's a massive gear change from what we were gonna do or how I was gonna do it. I am a believer in doing body panels and whatnot um, kind of on the ground as much as you can at ride height, just because especially as unibodies, they twist. So, I mean, I know we're, we don't have the wheels on the ground, what's on the lowest setting of the jack. Uh, I mean, really, it might be an, an inch higher. I don't think that's gonna affect too, too much. Also, we have no motor in the front. There's a bunch of stuff there, but it kind of is what it is. So that's the new plan. And uh, yeah, that's a hot run, right? You gotta kind of roll the punches. You buy junk, you have to deal with junk, but uh, it'll be nice when it's done. I'm not gonna use the whole rail. I think I'm gonna section in just the back, uh, back bit. Then I might section in the front bit, but keep as much original metal on this thing as I can. As little as there is left, but uh, yeah, a couple days of work, it'll be fine. Well, this would be the point of the project where we spiral out of control. So, obviously we gotta do a trunk floor. We should probably do, you know, sections of the rear frame rails. And if we're gonna do that, I mean, we might as well just pull the whole diff right out and see what the front frame rails look like. So that's what we're doing now. It's funny how cars go, right? And this is, you know, another good reminder if you're trying to do a hot rod, this is what could easily happen. You know, it, it can look good on the side, and now we can start chasing down the underside of a car. She's ugly. A lot of people, you know, they don't agree with, you know, the way I build a car or, or how I paint them or don't paint them and stuff like that. At least you know what you're getting. This thing, I could have put that quarter panel on, loaded it full of filler, painted it shiny blue, and underneath it would have been okay, drivable, I guess, but not what you want. And uh, this is the way to do it right now both on the lift and everything. So we'll see if we can get some of these bolts out. If not, we're sawzalling them. Do I have any clean blades or new blades? I have one. Um, so all it's holding the diff in at this point is gonna be a bolt through the front of the eyelet. But I think there's three bolts that hold a pad in, which I wanna take that out to see what the metal looks like uh, behind it. And then, um, you know, the, the shackles in the back. That'll give us an opportunity to get in here and pat, well, Actually, a lot of this will be filled up with the wheel tub, so that's not too bad. Clean this all up and make it look decent. A little ugly there, but the rest of it's decent. And, uh, yeah, pull the diff out. But what we're going to do with this thing, I actually want to measure it right quick, because if it's uh, Camaro, Firebird, whatever it is, it'd be a good one if we do upgrade. I have a 12-bolt. I might order that 9-inch, but this would be perfect for a trap Hop Chevrolet. It's hard finding narrow diffs. 60 inches is kind of the magic number for uh, F-bodies... Um, Novas and Tripod Chevys, which seems like that's all I own right now. So let's get after it, see if we can get out of this thing. It's uh, the bushing is pretty sacked. I thought I ordered some, but uh, maybe not.
Okay, so I hacked the diff out. Nothing was gonna be easy, so I just chopped the springs. We're not using them anyways. Um, I measured the diff. It looks like it's like 63 maybe, drum to drum-ish, something like that. People are saying it's like Firebird, maybe it's later. It's got the little ears on it for like a, like a four-link, triangulated four-link deal, I don't know. It's uh, It might fit in a Tri-5, or I mean obviously fit in this Camaro, but probably stuck the wheels out a little. So I think the factor in these are 60 or 59 and a half, something like that, so it would bring the wheels in a little bit, which would actually be good. They did kind of stick out a little goofy. Um, anyway, under here, so what happens is the front leaf spring goes in this little pocket, and of course all these are stripped in between the floor and stuff, but uh, it looks like the front of the frame rail is still in pretty decent shape. I don't see any big crusties or nothing like that, so we'll have to fight those out, which would be ugly. And uh, I think they use like speed clip kind of things. I think I'll probably weld some nuts in there or, or drill holes in the floor. I think that's what I did on my Novas. I drilled holes in the floor. So it was like nut and bolted into like this double wall on the floor. And what happens is it joins to the inner rocker, which this side's strong, that side, the other side is not. And it's like a big C channel thing. So we'll have to weld some stuff in there. And honestly, we'll probably do it a little bit better in factory, just put a little bit more steel. But again, front rails are good. Crusty, but not, not bad. Now the back, this side here, you can see the back of the frame rail, that's where the, the leaf spring kind of goes through. And that one's, she's split a little, and there's a couple holes. That, yeah, it's actually not terrible. We could probably just box that and fix it, but for the cost of the rail, we might as well replace it. Oh, it's actually got a crack right there. So obviously this thing was hit this side kink, this side cracked, so we'll just change that back section of the frame rail as well. And over here, you can see it's it's same thing, crusty. Well, yeah, there's rod holes in it, but more than anything, it's got this big doohickey. But you know what? It's still welded to this back pan, which is all bent to shit as well. <laughs> so all that's gonna have to come out. It's a bit bigger of a project than I was hoping for, but uh, yeah, just. Mentally, you got to get your head around it and kind of get in there. We pulled the fuel tank out. Obviously, the floor is rotten. So I think I'm just going to kind of keep cutting. I might just kind of set the floor in. I don't know how much more motivated I am tonight. Uh, sometimes you got a little, you know, a couple little blows backwards. Oh, yeah, this side here. So, which I knew I was going to have to do anyways. But you can see she's pretty rotten in there. So we're going to have to take all that out, plate that, and then uh, <clears throat> put that piece back in. And actually, I got new... Uh, shackle, whatever you want to call them, little pockets. So it's there, where this thing has rusted is super common on these F-body uh, Camaros. F-body, so there, right from day one. So it's not the end of the world. We'll take it out. We'll brace it. We'll put it back together, and uh, kind of keep on keeping on. They actually do sell this piece. I might. It was expensive, but maybe I should just buy it at this point. I mean, what's another hundred? While we're on the lift now, this thing is not moving. So this is, uh, this is a priority to get it kind of back together. So I do have to order leaf springs and bushings and all that stuff. And then whether we put this diff back in or something else, I do have that 12 bolt, which may end up going in this in the short term if I can't finance a, a nine inch. Unfortunately, the sheet metal is costing a few more dollars and uh, the diff's gonna work out to be about a thousand dollars and we're gonna be probably into that for more sheet metal, so is what it is okay so I'm not gonna lie it's been a couple of days it's kind of bummed me out just i don't know i wasn't really planning on doing this i thought the car was a little better so such is life anyways i had my little pity party i got something in my eyeball and uh i decided you know you take a day off you think okay well how am i gonna fix this thing because at this point she's scrap metal and then i came to the idea of i'll fix it Shocker, little, little hair on the lens there. So I went and picked up some bulk uh, by the foot Camaro. Now, this is pretty hoinky toinky. This is our honky tonkin, what do I usually say? 12 gauge and uh, that's just some 16, nothing too crazy. So here are my thoughts. We're gonna rebuild the Camaro suspension. Bigger, badder, better, better. <coughs> So what happens is the leaf spring 
goes into this little pocket. You can see the pocket kind of bolts into the floor. That's fine. Now, I have a new pocket. This is half unbolted. And it bolts to the frame rail through the floor. And it looks like it must attach to the inner uh, rocker as well. Now everything is clearly kind of rotten away. We're going to go ahead and peel the lid off this thing and see what's all under there. Now while it's all rotten, what I'm thinking about doing is using that 12 gauge and we're going to go ahead and replace the metal all the way around it with that. So we'll do inner rocker, we'll go 12 gauge to you know about there where it's good. We'll do the floor 12 gauge. And then we'll do the rocker, or the frame rail, sorry, 12 gauge. So we'll have a nice little C, we'll make that. Then we can do a, a, a top coat for the floor will be like 16. And then same thing, we'll probably, I did actually order rockers, so I may end up just sectioning some in. I'm seeing what happened. They were so cheap, I couldn't not. And then uh, we have all that. Now clearly that's sturdier than what was there. It'll be solid as all hell. As long as the, um, shackle is in the right place or perch whatever you want to call it is in the right place who really cares how it goes in there and uh yeah that's the plan so has one bolt going into the frame that one came out no problem one into the floor which was complete garbage and then this one here is just spinning so it's obviously broken too if we take that off we have the shackle where we want it we drill holes in that new plate be in the exact same spot and then once that's kind of tacked in there we can just brace the ever loving hell out of it now the way these cameras work you can't get you have to unbolt these three bolts to pull everything out to change the leaf springs we can't just weld that in unfortunately but uh yeah i'm gonna bunch done so i'm gonna set this up we'll get this kind of out and uh we'll start seeing what we got to do to patch it all up but the inner rocker and the frame rail are the two sturdy bits. So if we double wall those and we put something over top, man, she will be swanky. Okay, so here's the little piece. I actually, I bought a new one of these. This has been, I think, well, it's been in and out before because it's got a bit of a goofy setup, but uh, so I got one of them. Now we'll just show you, I don't need the light. Hang on, hang on. Okay, here we go. Now, you can see, it sits in that area. See, this is what it is, it's a speed clip. Uh, you see, oh, there we go, light. That's what it is. So there's one there, there's one there, and then there's one there. And honestly, it's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I think what I'm probably gonna do is I'll brace this side. Lots of bolts everywhere. Come on, Dan, get it out. Son of a, dude, hang, there we go. So, if I get some of this out, I'll cut the bottom of the rocker out. If I plate it along the bottom, and then up here, and then back with some heavy gauge, that'll be stiff as all hell. The frame rail is actually good. We'll clean that up. And then the floor, honestly, is not that bad. This hole's supposed to be there. This is junk, but we can fix that on the top side real easy. So we'll... We'll have to skin the floor a little, but you can see this hole right there is where the front one was. This is actually supposed to be there, one in the back. So if we take all that off, I clean this up, and if I just plate everything on the top side, I'm thinking that'll be mighty sturdy. It's a little thin right there, so we'll have to do a little whoop de do there. But we'll just plate it from the top side. Weld everything and everything. This is the inner rocker. So if we go right to that, then right under here is the frame rail, right to that. Yeah, this thing will be, she'll be sturdy. It'll be a lot of screwing around. I mean, it's gonna look ugly, but ultimately we're gonna do that. And we'll just put some sheet metal over it or that uh, 12 gauge. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go inside and grab the other piece that I have. I think I got them. And uh, just make sure they're the exact same and kind of start putting them together. These are supposed to have speed clips. These have obviously been changed just for regular nut and bolts. So that's probably why there's a big hole here. Well, maybe that's what it's supposed to be, but speed clip's supposed to be there, it just goes to that. So it's better than I thought, but uh, worse than I hope. Story of my life, but yeah, we can. We'll strengthen this up right good. Should be a, should be a good one. Okay. 
So I built this, I cut the whole piece right out. I thought, ah, it's this screwing around, I'm just gonna cut it out. So I did that, and then if you look at the bottom side, I welded it right to it. Put the holes, they line up. Now I have to trim it on this one side to fit. So we'll kind of, you know, do something like that. And if you look at this thing, so that, that's how that fits. It's got a little uh, marking or location, locating pin, so I'll drill a hole there as well, actually. But I'll be able to do that. And if you look at, see, these are kind of oblong, and this one is not. That's the one that's in the frame, so that one we're going to remain uh, using. So we should be good. And ultimately, um, we'll probably do, so I have to take this off, and then I have to weld nuts uh, well, on this side. I'll put it in, then bolt it, weld some nuts to it, and then decide what I want to do. Um, at the back, we don't have nothing, so I got to figure that. I left that out, and I left this long. Uh, this side has to be trimmed as well, actually, so I'll trim that all down to fit. Then what I'm going to do is this, all this rotten, well, there's nothing even there. I'm going to go ahead and clean that up, grind that down. I'm going to plate this all the way to the back with some more of this uh, 12 gauge. So it'll be, it'll be double wall, which is, you know, a little funny, but we'll just make a piece like that. Go right back to here, straight back, weld it. It'll be flapping in the breeze here for the time being, but then when we put the rocker on, that'll, that'll lock it right in. And then as the wheel tub goes in, it goes down and we'll weld it to the top and uh, the bottom. Actually, I guess we can weld to the top here as well. Kind of curves down in there, but that might just be regular floor. Not too sure. Then all that's left is there's just a little hole right in there. So I'll cut that out, bend a piece, and weld that in from the, probably just from the top. Grind it down, a little seam sealer, and uh, it won't be factory, but I honestly think it's to be quite a bit stronger. Um, all that 12, 12 gauge metal on there. And I gotta say, I think what I'm probably gonna do is when I clean this all up, I'll probably tack on the leaf break perch once it's in there permanently, just because why it won't you. This side you can get to, this side will have nut and bolts. This side says that stupid, you know, wing nutty deal, which I really don't like. So I'll grind it, give it a couple of good, good tacks. You can get to that real easy with a cutoff wheel down the, down the road if you have to. And we should be plenty sturdy. So we'll get that tacked in and then we can work on the, the frame. I know how to have a good time. I haven't figured it out yet, but I tell myself I have a good time. Man, this thing, one piece at a time, so we're keeping it nice and strong. Hopefully, this is, there's not much strength there. So check this out. We got our piece in there. Um, it's just a little high here because that's actually where the lifting pad is, so that's unfortunate. Um, this piece kind of rolls under and the floor kind of goes on top and joins across. I'm gonna cut all this out. Uh, I'm gonna get some more 12 and just kind of fold it and just weld it right across there, plug weld it into the frame, or actually do it on the back side, right into there and all the way over. So that'll be, like that's strong. I welded this piece in, you can see it here, the length, and we have the bolts in there. So I have, <laughs> that one's just like an aligner, but that worked out, and those ones fit just fine. We have room all the way around. This is just kind of long miscellaneous, I did cut, you see this ugly cut here, I cut all that out. So it will be double wall, look a little goofy on the outside, but that's that's what I want. Sturdy, and then now I can weld it down here and up top to the rail on that side, and then we can go all the way on the bottom and the top on this side, so it'll be completely sandwiched. And then like I said, we're gonna end up, this is the piece we're gonna cut out, put all new metal in there, so it'll go all the way across, join to the floor. This will be, Perfect, but you can see here, it's just kind of touching. Unfortunately, I have the lift. Actually, it's not bad. It's right, it's actually right where it should be. I don't think it'd be a, a big issue. In worst case, if it's tilted up a little bit, who cares? My concern was side to side and front and back. So that's good. Now we can go ahead and put the welder on 12 and just start burning all that in structure-wise. I don't think we'll do the floor uh, yet, because that's kind of after cosmetic-y stuff. I want to get it just, you know, get that in there and then the floor will just kind of flow over it 
And uh, I actually think what I'm probably going to do is I'll probably just, I won't have like a nice break or whatever. I'll do that 16 gauge across and then down at an angle. You'll never see this anyways. And then now it's just like completely boxed and uh, sturdy, very sturdy. Um, and then yeah, same thing up in here actually, because we have to cut some of this out for the wheel tub. So maybe we'll do in the wheel tub video. I ordered the inside structure pieces here so I can get that in as well. Like there's lots, lots and lots and lots, but that's uh, buy a Camaro. It'll be cheap. It's terrible. Okay, I'm gonna burn this in. It's terrible to film there. I'm terribly sorry, but it's just uh, underneath and ugly. So we'll get that dialed. I don't have a leaf spring yet. I have it ordered. I'm gonna do that. Eat something that I'm starving. And then we're gonna do the back frame section. I don't know where I wanna cut it yet. I said there was like a mark, like a join. I don't wanna go all the way forward. I'm thinking in the middle and I might have to cut out part of the trunk floor as well to get to both sides. But I was really dwelling and not super motivated to do this, but now I'm like in the zone. You just gotta force your way through it sometimes. And uh, that's where I'm at, force my way through. Ooh, so it ain't pretty, but that, is sturdy, sturdy, sturdy. Now, I didn't finish welding the edge. We still have gaps and all that, but realistically, that's that's just the structure of it. We have to still skin that with, you know, something else. So that's, I mean, it ain't going nowhere. That little, whatever bracket there fits. So that's pretty good. The other side now, I have to kind of make some choices, but I'm thinking what I'm probably gonna do is skin the top probably change the hardware just weld some nuts in there and it looked in much better shape than this side so if i just kind of plate over it or maybe if i can just do the floor with some heavier steel it'll be fine i mean this was just kind of beat up and rotten obviously the car sat with this side either in water or for whatever reason this side really rotted maybe the grass grew up through it easily could have we got to fix the inner rocker but we'll do that uh when we fix that. So now what we're gonna do is clean the junk out of the trunk. See what this pan, oh, it's behind the quarter. See how big it is. I, it looks like it'll kind of go up and over, I think onto the frame rail. So kind of, it'll join in this section. So if that's what it does, that's a bonus. But either way, we have to cut out the bottom and see what the deal is. I think before I do that, what I'll probably do is see if I have a piece of steel, I'll just weld like a bar here to here, just to kind of hold it. Um, yeah, that's the best way to do it, or maybe down up. I just think, I mean, if we cut the frame rail out, will it, will it get real floppy with no quarter panel and stuff on? That being said, I've seen some cars completely gutted, like way worse than this. Both sides, I've always heard, I don't know if it's fact or fiction, is you do one side at a time, that way you kind of keep some strength in it. And I mean, the other side, even though the quarters are just tacked on, the wheel tubs are welded in, the frame rail's still in there, the trunk still works. So I don't know, but that being said, I've seen ones where both sides are off, the rear frame rails are gone, the car just stops here, and I'm like, whoa. Them people are crazy. I'm gonna clean up a little bit, maybe put this diff outside, sweep up, get the junk out of there, see what we got for uh, space cut out and really just start grinding out the frame rail. Kind of ugly job, but uh, no one else is gonna do it.
Well, as per usual, everything is worse <laughs> than you hope. So this is the frame rail. So that's the kink I was talking about. You're like, eh, you know, it's kind of livable and this and that. But the other side was hidden by the trunk floor, which has been deleted. That's, uh, it's not good. I wonder, it doesn't look like it was, I guess maybe it was just pushed in, but you think it was pushed in, it would kind of kink it up. I don't know what happened there. It looks like it's flat, and I'm no expert. Which is unfortunate, because actually this frame rail, I mean, it's rusty and stuff, but like, that's, that's all good steel in there. It's not too bad, where it's all kinked up is where it's not great. But the real conundrum becomes, so it's bent there, and then it's kind of got a bit of a wonkiness till you get to about kind of here. So we got to, so we gotta decide where the best place to cut would be, and I'm thinking it's gonna be probably somewhere about that. So we're not actually gonna use that much of the factory frame rail, but we'll go across there, should be fine. All this actually section of the frame rail I had to modify on the other side, so that's fine. Um, and then back here, I'm gonna get the plasma, just kind of butcher all in there. But I think what I'm gonna do is uh, carry on cutting that out i don't know if i'll finish this off tonight i'm kind of running out of energy and i'm gonna have like an hour of cutting out the frame rail and then it has the lips we got to grind that all down peel that off the floor is still in good shape so that's nice i should get them flimsy um and kind of fit it in there but i don't think anything got shorter or anything like that in the previous dukes of hazarding this car has had what a rough life but uh and really, if we get it all cleaned up, the new frame will going, it'll be super easy. It's, it's the prep on prep on prep on prep that takes forever. Cut it out, grind it all down, and just kind of fit it in there. Obviously, we'll kind of have to look. So this is the new rail, which on the other side, really I'm just gonna use this back piece because it's nice having that all brand new. Um, we'll just kind of find a couple of markings you know, like where the bump stops are or something like that and we'll just kind of measure ahead you know like let's say it's three inches cut it you know bump stops three inches cut it and then just that's it it should fit up in there and be snug up against this tail pan which has seen better days i might add so we'll see i do have a new back pan but the inner we may have to uh hammer and dolly a little bit man this car it's a lot of work but uh, a week from now or 10 days, it'll be quite a bit nicer and it'll be, it'll be a pretty cool car. So I'll save you the cutting and grinding and we'll see you uh, shortly or tomorrow or next week. I don't know. See you in Motorbay, Dan. Oh, well, many hours of grinding away. Um, so I, what I did was I kind of cut the frame rail part, like we saw, which then left this basically was the you know, what's left. So you go over and you kind of drill out or grind out every spot well, take that out. And then where there was a spot well, I drilled a hole. So we'll uh, we'll plug well from the top down. Now I don't know how much we're gonna use of this side because we'll probably have replacing that with the floor pan, but this side we'll still use. Um, I kind of eyeballed where, where I cut to. So, you know, basically about, you know, whatever, an inch or half inch, I should say, away from the the bump stop, and I went just a little bit more on this one. It's probably three quarter. And that's actually not a super straight cut. But if I can do this one hand, this is kind of heavy. So we're, let me get it right up in there. That's pretty, pretty friggin' close. So we gotta do a little bit of trimming, but ultimately that will be good. And uh, really all that matters, we have the front we're happy with. This, it's gonna be butted up against the, the tail pan and the floor, so that ain't going nowhere. And where is it? I've made a heck of a mess. Oh yeah, this is the back. It was, uh, she's pretty crusty there. And you can see it was all rotten. So this is the section we'll be changing on the other side, just the back two foot or something like that. And uh, kind of carry on. So now, I'm gonna go back and forth a bazillion times. This cut has to be trimmed because this is down more than this one, so that's why it wasn't fitting so hot. 
but we'll get that kind of trimmed up. Um, I drilled some holes ah, in this section because that is going to be welded from the bottom up because you can't quite get in there because of the shock tower. Now the other thing that's going to happen is when we do the wheel tubs in the next video, this whole section is kind of cut down so we can put those wide wheel tubs in and uh, we'll probably just seam weld the whole thing. Even though it'll be plug weld, we'll seam weld the whole thing. So it'll be nice and sturdy. Back here, same thing, it's got some plug welds, but before it rolls out of the shop, we'll weld the crap out of it and kind of go from there. So we'll set the camera up. Um, this is all light, but that's all good. Look at that, that's like brand new metal. It's not all worn down or nothing. That's why we went so far. So that'll be nice and strong once we weld that together. It'll be uh, just like new. We sure didn't save much, <laughs> but whatever. Such is life. Looking back, I guess we could have changed it, but uh, I am a bit of a believer, especially now, the more I work in this, as much factory metal as you can use, do it. Even if it's only a couple of feet, use it. So we'll get this dialed in. I'm just going to give it a couple of plug welds so it'll have some strength again. But actually, this thing, a little bar in there, like it, the whole car kind of moves. So it's, uh, it's pretty sturdy. It didn't move at all. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's flimsy, but it's not <laughs> drooping. So set the welder up, we'll just put a few plug welds in, we'll seam weld that, give her a couple of good shots at the back, and should be sturdy for hanging on the hoist. Man, I really think a rotisserie, if I see one on Marketplace, cheap one day, I think that might be a purchase for me. Be kind of nice to be able to work up on its side, then you can push the thing up against the wall. I saw one for a grand not too long ago, I was like, I'll never use that. Then I bought Camaros. And I doubt I'm getting stuff with less rust in my YouTube career. I feel like I'm going the wrong way. Let's fit this thing. Well, we got the, the rail in. Honestly, it fit really good. Um, the, the floor can still be, you know, kind of pushed down and whatnot to weld, but uh, we got a few few tacks. The whole floor is all beat up. Like I said, a lot of this is gonna get cut out anyway, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the old fitment. The rail matched very close. I don't know if I should plate this. I can't imagine it makes a difference because it's plug weld right to the floor, like on a, on a regular car, if you're gonna chop the frame up, you'd wanna you know, fish plate it. So we got it right up against the back there. Everything is pretty cool. Uh, I'm happy with it. Very similar to the way the other one was. Kinda took some rough measurements. What I will do is I will measure, when I do that one, we'll just make sure they're the same, just in case this one moved, you know, any way, shape or form. It's kinda hard to compare it to, you know, this old junk. It was so beat up and crappy, but, at the end of the day, I mean, leaf spring cars, <laughs> if it's within a quarter inch, I'm going to call it good enough. But uh, we'll make sure we match side to side. I think everything else looked pretty good. Like I said, we kind of trimmed it to fit. I'm happy with it. And uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> sorry. We trimmed it the same as the other one and it fit right where it should. So obviously if it was hit from the back, if that's what would happen, you would think this rail would be too long because it would be, you know, longer in this area, which was collapsed, which doesn't look like it is. So we're gonna leave that as a win. Anyways, that's where I'm gonna leave this one. I know this video was kind of all over the place. We started off, we're like, oh, let's do wheel tubs and a quarter panel, make it look cool. And then uh, we do frame rails, frame rail. 
and all sorts of crap like that. I think, I don't know what I'm gonna do, we gotta clean up, because it's a disaster in here. If we should do the trunk floor next, or if we should try and get the wheel tubs in, which I think is probably the way to go, wheel tubs and quarter kind of hung and tacked in, then we can worry about inner rockers. The rockers when they come, I did get the tail pan, so I can actually put that on, really now that I think about it. Now we got that rail in. I am wearing on the other rails, so it'd be nice to get that together too, if I can get the quarter off, so. I'm babbling, but realistically, we'll do something. Thanks so much for watching. As always, if you wouldn't mind subscribing below, leaving a comment, especially if you guys have any other ideas or tips or tricks, hopefully I'm actually falling behind on videos. Usually I'm a week or so out, but I'm about a day out. I gotta edit this for tomorrow. So if you have advice, I'm more than willing to listen. And if it's wrong, I'm not cutting it out. So bear in mind, oh, suffering connectors? See you on the next one.